everybody, my name is Axel the Baxolotl, and welcome back to Reading Morganite! We are so close, so unbelievably close to being done. If I, if I've calculated this correctly, there should only be three more videos left. This one and then two more, and then I could be done. I could move on after so long. I'm so excited because this story is nothing but a headache. Oh, but we're continuing on with chapter 18, Recovery of Love. I don't like the titles of these chapters. They're, they're not nearly as interesting as the ones Chlorine Grown Roses had. We went, man, there are so many commas in the first, in the first line alone, three? There's no need for that many commas. We went to the temple after Kunzite gave me the news. There's no need for any commas right there, actually. None. You don't need any. I stared at the ground, unable to believe it, and trying not to cry. My arm. I didn't even feel it come off. And then it was gone. Not even a nub or blood. Was I less human than I thought? Do the crystal gems. How are they? I asked Kunzi quietly. They're fine, she said. Hurt, but fine, I guess. Also, they don't know you're here. Or hurt. Or... She looked at Arm with a real frown. I could tell there was sorrow in... <laughs> in her from my injury. That's hurt. In hurt from my injury. Oh, I'm not doing the fake stuttering bullshit. No, I've grown tired of it. But what we'll do? <laughs> but who was phone? But who was phone? <laughs> my arm, I can't fight and my weapon is gone, I said and tried to take out weapon. I failed. Maybe you can just poof and reform, Kunzite said. If I could poof, I'd have done it already, I said, frown. But something would be better than nothing. Thanks so much for your help, Kunzite. I'd have died without you. Sonia is different. I told you, Kunzite shout. Himitsu is dangerous. That's what it does to people. Shoral and her mind control, that little brat and her magic, that aristocrat and her sword, and the other one's speed. Sonia is a monster. Can't be saved. I know you cared, so I'm sorry. It was the first time that I ever heard such genuine emotion from her. Wow, thank you. Kunzite smile. You don't need to keep thank. Oh, you don't need to keep thanking me. Okay, of course I'd do it. I felt happy to be here with Kunzite, such a good friend, and cares so much about me. Without thinking, I went to grab hand. Kunzite jump and blush. What the fuck do you think you're doing, she muttered, but not really mad. I could tell. She squeezed my hand and pulled me closer. I started to feel weird when I heard a sudden voice. We turned. It was Pearl there. Oh, I'm so glad you're both okay, she said. She ran forward and hugged us. She noticed, though, my missing arm, and she flinches off with tears in her eyes. Morganite! I would have died, too, if it not for Kunzite, who say- Kunzi. You keep switching back and forth between Kunzi and Kunzite, and it- No. I said sadly, now I only have one arm and no weapon. Well, we can see Peridot about Arm and Bismuth about the weapon, Pearl said, so you should be okay by some time soon. Still is not good you missing an arm. Steven will freak if he sees, so maybe it would be better if we didn't go to the temple. Do you both need escort? Oh gosh, the writing is just progressively getting worse. No, said Kunzite, but I nodded. Pearl left and Kunzite seemed really pissed. Fucking hell, are you fucking serious? This is fucking ridiculous. I swear to fuck. Fucking joke. Wow, that is a... I don't even think I've ever said that many fucks in a sentence before. And I swear like a sailor. Jeez, Kunzite. Chill, said Kunzite. I couldn't tell what was wrong. Garnet came back. I was happy since it was a while since I last saw her together. Since last I saw, she was Sapphire and Ruby. She seemed okay. Hi, Garnet, I exclaimed. You're okay, but how is Bloodstone and the others? We don't know where Bloodstone is. She teleported away at some point, Garnet said. She's a stable fusion. Really intimate. Really intimidate? In okay, anyway, let's go to the barn. 
We went to the barn. Lapis wasn't there, but Peridot was. She was there watching her dumb show and playing on Tumblr. She flinched when she saw us. I never met Peridot before and didn't know her past some stories, but I didn't think I... I liked her. There was a box of scrap metal and tools nearby. Hey, Peridot, said Garnet. This is Morganite and Kunzite. Morganite misses an arm. Can you help? Peridot looked up. I felt uncomfortable, since I knew she used to be for Yellow Diamond, and she was a little scary. But she smiled, and I blush a bit. Kunzite was getting jealous. Oh, sure. Let me measure. She got a tape measure and measured my left arm. No... No questioning at all about why this gem is just miss. Okay, does she just is she just kind of assuming that Morganite is an off color gem? I I don't know. This this story doesn't make sense. I'm just guessing as things go along. She got a tape measure and measured my left arm. After that, she wrote it down and looked around in a box of parts. After a few minutes, there was a new arm. Looked kind of like the one Peridot used to have, but bubblegum pink, she smiled. Done. Well, thanks, I explained. Exclaimed. Okay, now we go to temple, Garnet said. We went to the temple and everyone was there. Stephen was in his room playing a video game, Amethyst in the fridge, and Pearl was cleaning. They didn't notice us. Garnet looked at us. Now I want to talk to both of you. Follow me, she said. She went to her room and Kunzai and me went with her. We sat down. I could see how close you both are, said Garnet. Kunzai looked annoyed, and I blushed. If you want to fuse, go for it. It's good. What? What? Why are we just... What? That was not a good transition into the possibility of them fusing at all. No. That was... I feel like I've been slapped. What? What the hell are you talking about, Kunzai? shout. I... It's no use. I can tell the love, said Garnet. If you fuse, you'll become a new gem. Oh, that gem will probably be called... Taffy Taffyite? I literally googled this earlier. I kind of skimmed ahead. And I saw that. And I googled it to see how to pronounce it. And I totally forgot. Taffy Taffyite? Whatever, we're going with that. It will be strong, a lot strong than you both together, and have good chemistry. I like the idea of a new fusion in town, she smiled. We were done talking after that, so we all left the room. I went to mine, though, and Kunzite followed. I sat on my bed, but before I got comfy, Kunzite cornered me. I don't like you like that, she said in a low voice. Don't kid yourself, we'll never become Taffite, since I'll only disappoint you and make you worse, she left, and I was confused. You're not the only one! I get you're going for the whole Sundere vibe with Kunzai, but this is... This is absurd. This is ridiculous. No! Oh gosh, I hate these characters so much. Anyways, I guess we're moving on to chapter 19. Oh boy. I'm not excited. Okay, chapter 19. Here we go again? It was about a week later, and I was at home with my parents. What? You still... You still communicate with your parents? What? Was this... Was this mentioned earlier, and I just totally forgot? It has been a very long time in between me reading these chapters, so I fu I don't remember jack and shit. Oh, but... Oh, okay. I, I guess... They were normal parents. They weren't also half gem. Lol, well, don't. Unless you're writing out a text conversation between two people, don't put shit like LOL in your story. My mom was named Suli, and she had the same hair as I used to, which is long and dark, kind of purple, but mostly brown, and a little choppy. Her eyes were gray, like mine used to. My dad's name was Simon. Suli and Simon? He has blonde hair, blue eyes, and wore glasses. People usually said I was the spitting image of my mom, which was true. We looked very similar, especially before I became Morganite. So sometimes it made my dad jealous, I think. But they still loved me no matter what. We were sitting at dinner table, eating dinner together. My dad made us lasagna. He was a great cook. 
So even though gems don't need to eat, I ate a lot. My dad looks away from his phone and smiles, and my mom says, You've had a lot. You must be hungry. Yeah, I love dad's lasagna, I said, and ate more. To uh, TBH? Are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> to be honest, I hadn't ate much since last week, and the scary things that happened. School started again, and the gems told me it would be better if I kept being human for a while. But your arm is gone. Replaced with robotics. So they could hunt Bloodstone and the Himitsu. Plus, Bismuth was making my a new weapon. So it wasn't like I could do much anyways. I'm not... I not see Kunzite since the last thing she said to me. We'll never become Taffyite. Since I'll only disappoint you and make you worse. But what did she mean? After I had three plates, my dad laughed. Maybe that's enough, suggests he. We won't have any left over for mom to bring to work tomorrow at this rate. And you know how much I hate eating cup of noodles for lunch, she giggled. And I smiled because I love my mom. Okay, I finally relent and I pushed my plate away from me to show I'm done. Then I said I love you to my parents and went upstairs to my room. The room was similar like it was eight years ago and I had a desk with books and my bed had gray sheets and the wall was light pink. The carpet was beige. I likes my room a lot since it gave me a lot of privacy. I had got a new school uniform which I was wearing since my last one was kind of dirty. Then wash it? Oh, and they redesigned the uniform because it was a new semester. And because they wanted to distance from the death of some... That's really not how that works, but okay. So now I wear a gray v-neck sweater with a collar dress shirt under and a black ribbon. They say it was meant to remember Sonya, but no. And a dark gray pleated skirt. I also wore knee-high black socks and a Mary Jane's. It was good that they changed the uniform because of my arm. I could take the robot piece off and it looked kind of like the arm was coming back, which was good. I wore log sleeves a lot now to hide that arm. And whenever notice, I say I'm doing cosplay. That's how I tricked my- No! No one in their right fucking mind would believe that. Anyway, as I got comfy to get on my computer, I heard a tap at my window. I flinched since I was surprised. What if Himitsu? I put a hand in a fist and went to window, scared. Until I pulled the curtains, I gasped. It wasn't Himitsu at all, or even a gem. It was Holly. Who the fuck is Holly? Holly had curly blonde hair and a bob and amber eyes. She looked almost no different from last time. She was even smaller than me, like before. She was wearing school uniform too. She motioned to open the window. I opened window and she climbed inside. Morgan Thomas, she exclaimed. I'd like to see you again. How have you been? You're so pink. Holly, I thought you moved, I gasped. I thought she was in Jersey City. I did, but now I'm back. I wanted to apologize. Oh! Oh! You're the bit! You're one of the bitches! Guys, one of the bitches came back! Oh my god! I did, but now I'm back. I wanted to apologize. Holly came over and hugged. I hugged- no. I hugged back, but only a little. Delilah was wrong crowded. I'm sorry for teasing you and always calling you fat, because actually I always thought you were super cute- no. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for bullying you. It's because I thought you were- shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You're still a hoe. I don't like Holly. Holly's still a bitch. What a half-assed fucking apology. Absolutely not. If anybody ever tried to apologize to me like that, I'd fucking smack the shit out of them. No, go, get away from me. Apology not accepted. Leave. What, I question? I unhug her. <laughs> unhug. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll go with that. And gape. No way. Yeah, super duper cute. Like a muffin. And now you're even cuter, she said. Anyway, hot No. No, no, be gone. Be gone, thought. Be gone. Away with you. I don't, I don't like this. This is weird. Anyways, hot stuff, I found something cool out by the quarry. I s sighed. Really? Yeah, and I promise the same thing won't happen again. I was so worried that day, she said. But anyways, let's go. I don't know. I want to sneak out, I said. My parents are home and might get worried. Don't be like that, come on. If we leave fast enough, they'll never know. See, she hasn't changed even a little bit. Not even, not even a smidgen. 
Holly pushed me to the window and had me climb down. She followed me and we went off to the quarry. I remember where it was, but I was scared. Being there filled me with terrible memories. What if something bad happened? We go to the quarry and it started to look cloudy like rain. Holly frowned, but then she smiled. Oh, well, at least I'll get to see you with your shirt wet. I blushed and almost cried because embarrassed and it remembered that night. Yeah. We went to the place where Holly and Delilah had swum last time, and I gasped when I recognized the pit I fell in. Look familiar, she asked, laughing. It's down there. No, I screamed. That's not safe. And we're in our uniforms. Last time I went down there. Don't worry, I could give you one of mine, Holly said. Oh my god. See, she hasn't changed. She hasn't changed even a little bit. That And why are you wearing your school uniforms anyways? But we're not the same... And then she screams. She put, oh, Holly pushed Morganite down the pit. Thanks, Holly, you bitch. And Holly slid just behind me laughing like it was a ride. I was screaming though, till we landed in the puddle at the end. It was the same cavern in the kindergarten that I'd been in last time. Our uniforms were clean now because the water, no, that's not how that works. But I was still scared, Holly was laughing. Fun, huh, she questioned me. I could bear breathe and world was go black. No, I screamed. Why would you? Why do you do, Holly? <laughs> Again, the writing just gets worse. Check it out. It's that girl we went to, sc went to school with us. Remember her? Holly ran off and pointed to something on the ground behind a rock. I was terrified, but I went over. I almost cried when I saw. It was Sonia. And she was there. You just said. She was asleep, though, and wearing the school uniform. Plus, her arms were normal and not cannons. She still had crown gem, though. I almost forgot that Sonia was at school when I knew Delilah and Holly. But this was danger for Holly. Holly, you need to leave, I said, serious. She could be her. I need to help her. Oh, yeah, you have medial medical stuff. Your dad is a nurse, right? Holly said. Okay, but I'll be back later. See you later, alligator. Shut up, Holly. I hate Holly so much. Why did you bother bringing her back into this story? She serves zero purpose. Holly left up the hole we came down from. How? I was just there with Sonia, lying unconscious on the ground, and I remember how things used to be when we were little. Is that seriously the end of chapter 19? Wow. Okay. That was... That was a lot. I don't know, that's... Ooh. <laughs> oh, like I said, this story's a headache. I don't understand what's happening anymore. Why did we just have a random time skip? Why is Holly here? What purpose does she serve? I don't... This is insane. There is no plot. Transition from scene to scene is terrible. The writing is terrible. I... Why did I choose to read this? What am I doing? <sighs> but anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I can't wait to be done with this because this is insane. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you are new. And check out all my social media. It's like down in the description below. Because if you don't, I'm going to steal your toes. Goodbye.